Hello and welcome, my name is Jason Baker, and this is the Megacade. The Megacade is a home emulation system that allows you to run up to 70,000 plus games and growing. Some of these games are the arcade games that you grew up with as a kid. Perhaps the Nintendo Wii, the Sega Genesis, the PlayStation, you name it. And there's been software emulation that allows you to run it. And now we can enjoy this as adults. So what is emulation? Emulation essentially is software that emulates the old hardware. Now what do you need? You just simply need a computer. If you have a computer, you could run emulation. In fact, that's what's inside the Megacade. It's just simply a big PC with a couple of hard drives. And of course, some speaker systems and custom artwork. Now, if you attach that to a television set, in this case, it's a 50 inch 4K TV and a, an additional smaller screen up top for the digital marquees. Now remember, Compute comes in many different forms. You could actually run this on a Raspberry Pi. Many of the old games really didn't have a lot of power or memory, which is why they're so sufficient. You could even run them on your cell phone, on an Android device. So you can emulate these games, you know, without having to pay for them on the Play Store, for example. But one of my favorites is you can now even play this on Xbox or Sony PlayStation because the emulation software is downloadable. So that means you can install and play these games as well. So that covers compute, but then you need the emulator software. And the most popular one is MAME. MAME stands for Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. And with that, you can run thousands and thousands of different types of games on pretty much any major operating system. The great thing is, is MAME has been around for quite a long time. It's actively worked upon and it supports thousands and thousands of machines. And so with this, they're really trying to archive all of the old games. Now, that doesn't mean it's the only one. There are other popular ones like the Dolphin Emulator or Daphne for the Laserdisc games. In fact, if you go to the e EMU Gen on Wikipedia, you can find a whole list of consoles, computer systems, handhelds, and even kind of non-emulator stuff. All of this is available for download for free. So you can even go back and relive those days, say on the Nintendo 64, uh, the Xbox, uh, PlayStation. Um, there's even things available for the Xbox 360. So as these uh, the, the hackers start to get better, they're starting to emulate more uh, systems. Uh, the PS2, I think, is the most recent uh, available for one of those. They are working on the PS3. But of course, the favorites like Atari 2600, Coleco, Intellivision, uh, you name it. Even uh, the old Commodore 64, Amigas, actual computer systems that are hard to get um, uh, anymore. How about systems from Europe like the Armstead? It's pretty awesome. Well, even the Altair 8080 is under there as well. So how do you get started with all these fun, nostalgic games? Well, you have to go and find the games, but that's not always that easy because it's not like they're uh, sold in stores. So the first thing you have to do is obtain the ROMs. The ROMs are actually dumped versions of these arcade games from their original arcade chips. And sometimes you need BIOSes and other things. So if you want to replay that history, you're gonna to have to go on kind of a little bit of a scavenger hunt. But it's really not too hard to find these now with the power of the search engines. But is it legal? Are you gonna get in trouble for running some of these games? Now, technically you should own most of them, but if you go to archive.org, many of these ROMs are actually available there for free. So a lot of these vendors have, you know, let their licenses lapse and you can download for many different kinds of systems, uh, whether they be consoles, computer systems, including all of your favorite arcade games, uh, such as the, the main project itself. So you can download these main ROMs and actually have access to thousands and thousands of old arcade games. So download those thousands of games from your childhood and acknowledge your midlife crisis. The real question is, how do you organize those thousands of games? Well, the next level of emulation comes with launchers. Now a launcher, such as say Rocket Launcher, will allow you to store a database of your entire collection. It makes it easy to automate. You can also use other launchers like RetroArch or even LaunchBox, which has a premium version that's going to really make life very fun uh, in your collectible of your new machines. 
Now, of course, the launchers work hand in hand with a front end. So wouldn't you like a beautiful user interface that allows you to show off your collection, get all sorts of great information. And of course, there are many different kinds of front ends that you can use. For example, there's Big Box, which is one of my favorites. Now with Big Box, it gives you this widescreen format version of fantastic interactive visuals, details on your individual machines, customizable downloadable content, and it even goes out there and will scrape the internet for some of these images. So that way you can get the entire collection of archived images, documentation, manuals, and more. The next on the list would have to be Emulation Station. The difference here is it's a beautiful and easy to use front end, but it's mostly compatible with Linux and or Android configurations. You're gonna find this most often on the Raspberry Pi. Because emulation is very lightweight, doesn't require a lot of CPU or memory, it gives you a fantastic graphical interface. So here you can still select through the many different systems that are supported by the hardware of a Raspberry Pi, and you can get the automation to go out there and automatically download specific artwork, game bezels, all sorts of really great metadata information. You can organize your collection how you see fit, um, add and remove games, but also kind of start to filter out which ones that you favorite most of all. And of course, the great thing about these launchers and front ends is they allow you to configure multiple different input devices, whether they're old joysticks uh, from Sega, Nintendo, uh, custom arcade sticks like you might see in the arcade as well, really kind of helps with the ease of configuration of your machines. Now, finally, there's Hyperspin, and Hyperspin's probably one of the most popular front ends, but it's actually been discontinued, but its legacy still lives on. It's known for its kind of spinning wheel configurations, in which you have a wheel of all sorts of different machines. You dive into that wheel to see smaller wheels of the individual games that are available on those particular machines. It's quite interactive, overly stimulating at times, but still one of the most popular and free systems that you can use and makes for a fantastic front end. And with those components, you can recreate all of the great fun memories of being in the arcade or just at home playing your old games on your favorite system or even computer. But if arcades and computer games aren't your thing, well, perhaps you might be into motion simulation. <laughs> Motion simulation goes great with an interactive VR headset, um, inducing the almost uh, uh, realization that you truly are falling. So I hope this has inspired you to figure out some great ways to have fun indoors. Thanks for watching.